the end of the weekend But I still wanna turn up Yeah, I still wanna turn up all I want is to go again Hey gang, welcome back to another video It's your girl from Daily Jazz And today we are outside Why getting up, running So happy because today is such a pretty day here in Charlotte But before I get to run in As you can see from today's video We're going to be talking about how I've restructured my workout And I truly feel that it's for the better This was my first full week of restructuring my workouts And I feel like I'm already seeing the changes in my body that I want to see Um and I'm still on my recomp journey even though I haven't posted about it lately that will be in upcoming videos but for now be sure to hit the like and subscribe button to join the official Sincerely Jazz game because y'all know how I feel about hoes that are here that are not part of the game I was late I ain't gonna lie people be doing way too much at the gym and by doing too much, I mean, why are you doing 10 exercises? I was a victim of doing too much at the gym, too many exercises. Because honestly and truly, you only need about four or five exercises to really get a good workout in. So in today's video, we're gonna go over how I have now restructured my workout plan to be more inclusive of my cardio at the end, cardio core, as well as reduce the amount of exercises that I am doing. Because I was up here trying to figure out, Jasmine, why do you have 10 exercises written in this damn journal and no cardio? So that's where the restructuring has come into play. So let's get into it. Let y'all know the deal. Before we get started on all of that, be sure to hit that subscribe button to join the official Sincerely Jazz Gang. If you don't know, I am a former active duty soldier turned corporate gal. And on this channel, I'll give you tips and advice on how to live a happy and healthy life. All right, let's go. So my current workout split is a combination of pull days, push days, and leg days, and a defined cardio or hit long run day. So the breakdown is back and biceps, chest, shoulder, and triceps. I actually cannot stand working chest um, and shoulders. So I decided to combine those because those are kind of like in the same upper body family anyway. So I do chest, shoulders, and triceps all in one day. That's the only day that I train chest because, you know what I'm saying, like, I ain't trying to have like no, I ain't trying to lose, lose my boobies. I know you can't really lose your boobies by doing chest, but still, I don't really need to have the most pronounced chest because I'm, I'm still a lady. Then I do quads and plyo. So uh, uh, that's just legs and some plyometrics, um, usually maybe some ball slams or some box jumps or something like that. And then I do back and biceps again because still got to focus on this back because I'm trying to unbig it after all I done did to it. And then I do glutes and hammies. Now I know some people are going to say, oh, you shouldn't train legs within a day of each other, but if you stretch and do some foam rolling on that second leg day then it wasn't as bad i mean i had some tightness in my quads still but i didn't train quads so i didn't do any movements that were really meant for quads you know what i'm saying like i didn't squat on this last um leg day so that wouldn't really be a factor and then saturdays i run so i was running on um sundays but like i just really want to just rest on sundays because i don't get that many rest days um so sundays are my full rest days i still may go for a walk you know what i'm saying like around the neighborhood but to get a hard workout in on sundays i'm not doing that anymore when i say my workouts are structured now i mean super super structured because now i'm focused on oh excuse me making sure that i have compound and accessory movements in there so jasmine what are compound and accessory movements i'm going to tell you so compound movements these are going to be your barbell back squats front squats deadlifts your uh barbell bench presses and overhead presses so these set the foundation for your workout so when you're writing your workouts or whatever these should be one of the first exercises that you do i typically do my compound exercises first 
because the rest or the accessory exercises they just add on to what i've done so i typically have this as the first exercise i'm going to do and for example if i'm doing quads i'm going to do either front squats or back squats that's it i'm not doing um a front squat and some deadlifts like no i'm going to do one compound exercises because that targets multiple um muscles at that time to have me be successful in that one movement some other benefits of compound exercises is that they usually end up burning the most calories also they help you to improve your range of motion coordination and flexibility so making sure that you get a good handle on your compound movements are key that's why for me when i'm doing a lot of my big compound movements i really really try to focus on my form you know i want to make sure especially if i'm doing chest press that i'm you know activating those triceps and you know like retracting my scapula so make sure i get that good uh was that pull in my chest and if i'm doing um deadlifts i want to make sure that my hips aren't shooting up too fast and that i'm pushing through my feet engaging my core like it's so much to think about with the compound movements but it's really the basis and the best way to start your can we take a minute to appreciate my hair y'all i did this myself i crocheted it i braided my little locks down baby you cannot tell me nothing one thing about this hair is that it's a little big you know what i'm saying like my locks are like shoulder length barely but like i'm just not used to having all this hair i mean i am because when i had my own curly hair my hair was huge it wasn't this long but baby this 22 inches baby <laughs> Anything less than 16 is not even, it's not even in the category. But I love it so much. I don't know how long I'm going to keep it. I did like, I just, I just flat twisted my locks up front. But I really like it. I just like to have something to swing, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, let's get back to this video. So accessory movements typically follow compound movements and they are more um, like isolation focused. Uh, they can be used to help you improve on compound movements. So let's say you are doing again quads and you're doing your back squats. Well by you know doing exercises such as the leg extensions or the was it hip ab abductor or adductor whichever one that works the inside of the thigh to help strengthen those hip flexors that can help you improve on your compound movement of the back squat um the, uh or correct muscle imbalances so some more examples of accessory movements would be uh biceps curls or seated leg curls uh prone leg curls um yeah things like that that typically focus on specific movements and specific muscles so now that you know what compound and accessory movements are we can now begin to put the pieces together okay that means we can now start talking about what specific exercises you should incorporate into your work the first thing that i would say is that you need to first know what your goals are if you are working with a certified personal trainer or whoever they should be creating your workout plan based off of your fitness goals okay i need a snack and by knowing your fitness goals you will be able to ensure that you are doing the correct workouts and the correct training plan to meet your fitness goals so for example one of mine is um well one of my current fitness goals is body recomposition and first of all body recomp i thought i was gonna be able to do it in 12 weeks it takes time okay so that's why i haven't posted an updated workout uh an updated like recap video because baby it takes longer than 12 re 12 weeks like it may be at the six month to a year mark before i really get to where i want to go but it's okay because i'm gonna document this journey the whole time but since one of my goals is body recomposition then i do like my workouts are tailored 
towards that. So for example, like a lot of my compound movements like deadlifts and and squats, I build on those every week. So like if I squat 155 or 165 this week, the next week I need to be trying to hit 175, 180 type. So I make sure to incorporate progressive overloads as well as build on and push heavy weights. So now you know that you need to add in your compound movements, your uh, accessory movements. Now we're gonna talk about cardio and core. I always feel like there's this huge debate on whether you should do cardio first or cardio afters. And to me, honestly, it shouldn't be a damn debate on it. Like do cardio after. I say do cardio after because one, you're not gonna lose your muscle gains that you got from, from strength training and cardio takes a lot out of you like doing 30 minutes of cardio before you strength train you're going to be so tired where you're not going to be able to lift those heavy weights so save it for the end i mean yeah you're going to be struggling on the treadmill or struggling on the stairmaster but i'd rather struggle on this treadmill or the stairmaster than not be able to lift heavy yeah usually my cardio consists of <clears throat> either treadmill incline walk or treadmill sprints on the incline um and if i'm sprinting i'm doing about 10 to 12 sprints on a rising incline uh usually i try to do i think last week i was able to get up to a five incline i mean i can sprint on a higher incline but it's tough but i would uh, i think i was up to like an eight speed so that's like a like an eight minute mile or so. So you know what I'm saying? We, we getting it in. And then if I'm doing um, Stairmaster, I'm doing levels. I try to not go below level seven on the Stairmaster if I'm doing about 30 minutes. It's tough, super tough because I hate being stationary for that long. But it's the, the reasoning behind it to me makes sense. I rather again struggle on the stairmaster and be tired on that than to not be able to lift heavy in my workouts. Every now and then, I also do uh, jump ropes. I may do like two minutes of. Um, I, I'm probably not gonna be able to jump for two minutes. I do like maybe thirty minutes of or or like fifty so reps of jump ropes, and I'll take a break, and then I'll just keep doing a circuit of that um, for about ten minutes. But it just depends on how much time I have left and how much. Yeah, just know how much time I have left. Cause sometimes I don't, be, I don't be paying attention to my rest times, and I'll be on social media scrolling. Which now I don't even really be on social media while I'm in the gym. I just save it for later because it takes so much of your time while you're in the gym. When I can just really just make sure that I'm doing that mind and muscle connection, and that I'm just getting ready for that next set. So I try not to be on my phone no more during my workouts. So a lot of times when y'all see me posting in my stories, I've already left the gym. I just may not post those till after I leave. Don't get it twisted. I never post when I'm somewhere. Never. Last thing I was gonna say is, I try to never go over 90 minutes total of a workout. So when I see that I'm getting close to that hour mark of strength training with compound and accessory movements, I will finish, you know, my accessory movements out and I'll go into my cardio and core. So usually that takes about, if I'm doing like core, I'm doing, you know, some reverse leg tucks or um, like plank or something, you know, something that I can get done in a timely manner and then go into my cardio because I try not to skip my cardio at the end, especially now that I work out in the evenings, Ooh, whatever. Now that I work out in the evenings, I don't have no excuse to not get my cardio in. In the mornings it was kind of tough because I was having to cut my workout short to you know, run home and get ready for work. But now that I work out in the evenings, I don't have no excuse to not get my cardio done. So I always will get that in regardless. But I hope y'all have enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Before you leave, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notifications to know when the next video drops. Ah, see you next time. Bye.